So welcome everybody. So welcome everybody. Um, now I know we all were studying the priest again. I mean, we're getting tired of studying the priest already. <laughs> but we're almost there. Um, this week we're, we're up to questions 16, 17, and 18. Um, if you're reading the same book as, as I have, I'm on, starting on page 139. Um, and, um, so we're almost to the end of the chapter. It's only, only one more week and we'll be finished with this chapter. Um, so, so when we're picking up this week, um, the priest is asking Alan Kardec about, um, about, he's talking about uh, communication with spirits. What the priest mentioned is that um, the church actually forbids communication with the spirits because they were condemned um, by Moses um, in the Mosaic Law. So, so Alan Kardec's first point is that as as a priest in a Christian church, he's saying, "Why are you uh, quoting Mosaic Law?" He said, "Are you more Jewish or are you more Christian?" And I thought that was pretty funny, um, but it kind of it kind of like it's it kind of struck with something with me um, growing up, where I always kind of questioned like you, you have the Old Testament and the New Testament, and they seem to contradict each other a lot. But as as a Christian, like nobody ever really tells you like which parts you're supposed to keep and which parts you're supposed to throw away. It's like it's it's kind of funny. Um, so. I, I don't know if you guys ever ran into that before. If you ever found the contradictions in the in the in that kind of a, a in that kind of reasoning, where um, you know, Alan Kardec says that Moses um, prohibited communication with the spirits simply because um, the people at the time were using it um, as a means of trying to fortune tell. Um, they, he says that the dead were not evoked out of respect and affection or out of sentiment of, of piety, but as a means of fortune telling and the object of shameful dealings. So, um, what what is your what is your take on communication with the dead? Does that seem like something that you, you would think is right or wrong? Or how do you feel about that? Uh, the dead is what? Uh, spirit then? Yeah. People when, we, when this body leaves, we're... People we're, that have passed on. Yeah. Okay. And... Uh, what was the question again? <laughs> I lost well, You know, because uh, Moses, Moses was saying, don't do it. <laughs> you know, and... and, uh, and right. So, what's, what's kind of interesting, Alan Carrick points out, is the fact that Moses actually... told people like stop evoking dead spirits is actually sort of proof that like you can evoke dead spirits in itself. Yeah, Clark was very clear uh, on it. You also said that uh, where the Christian, the Catholic Church is sort of down on spiritism. He says, but he doesn't find that among the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. You know, they were, like myself, are very open to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. He said, yeah, he said that the, I don't know if he said the Jews or the Hebrews. Or he, he said, said the Jewish. He said they're, they're the religion that's the least against spiritism. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So they didn't really say they were for it, but they said they were the least against it. Oh. I guess, let me answer your question. Um, for me, it depends on what we, what I think uh, a spirit is. So how do I feel about it? It depends on what I think, think uh, I'm doing. Uh, if I'm directly or indirectly communicating with uh, the dead. Um, from the point of view that um, I'm just communicating with somebody who is a human being like I am and who at that particular point does not have a physical body as we touch it here and we feel it here. Um, but it's just the same. It's exactly the same. So. I feel the same way I feel about 
communicating with other human beings like we are right now. Um, for me, it's just the same thing. Um, you know, with the same same uh, precautions, with the same um, and not the same angles, uh, the same things that I would do with uh, um, with anybody present. Um, it just doesn't change much. The uh, the messages in the Bible were inspired by prophets. Prophets got their message through spirit, mm -hmm. and um, basically. If we could do the same, which I think we can, we can be prophets. I mean, I think everyone's a prophet if they know that they're spiritual and they can basically get inspired and write their own gospels. I think spiritism, you can manifest your own reality, your own, and the kind of move beyond. I mean, there's beautiful messages in the New in Old Testament, but I think you can go beyond that. You got to kind of grow, you got to keep moving, keep growing, keep understanding. And uh, the past, you know, is the past, but. You grow from that sense of understanding to a bigger understanding of spirit. I think, and you keep growing from there. Um, when I was a child, my, my parents used to tell me to do this or don't do this, and they were looking out for my safety. And when I would ask them why, they would say, because I said so. And that was, that was fine. I was a child, and that's what needed to be done. But as we get older and mature, as everyone's an adult here, I don't need those same rules and regulations. Um, we have the ability to use our minds. Um, I think the intention is important. Why am I seeking to seek, uh, speak with the Spirit? Is it just for fun? Is it for, you know, giggles and whatnot? I don't think that's probably appropriate, but I kind of, what turned me away from the church when I was young was the, the dogma and the rules. Um, whatever the opposite of Resonances, that's what that was for me. Like certain things resonate with me. This, that this me. Right. Is that it? Yeah, that, then, yeah, sounds good. That's, that, that's exactly what it did. So it kind of pushed me away from the church. Oh, there it. And, <laughs> and now, I, I mean, I find myself, you said you're talking about the Old Testament, New Testament. I look at Jesus' teachings. I look at what's applicable and that I can use and understand because I have to be able to understand what I'm reading. Because it gets misinterpreted all the time, misused. So to be able to use that and apply it, um, trying to keep an eye on what's what's the goal is, is brotherhood that Jesus says it's bringing people mm. together and we have a lot of separation in this world um, and so I think we all if, if we're here we have a certain desire we don't need to be told by anybody well you shouldn't do this because it's mm -hmm. bad but we're, we're beyond that now you know it's almost an insult to intelligence just to tell me that I want to know why because right. we're meant to grow we're meant to explore we're meant to expand our consciousness mm -hmm. um, in my opinion well, yeah. yeah and I, I, I got to the point too where I, I couldn't just be I couldn't say like when they say don't do this I need to know like why why not <laughs> and if it, if it can't tell me why I'm gonna figure it out <laughs> you know usually by making my own mistakes I like the analogy because it's part of a, a card act, right? And, and Steve touched on it, so thank you for that, Nick. The, uh, you know, at the time, there was abuse happening with, you know, the spirits and, and, and these things were happening. So it was appropriate to govern that, right, to kind of help settle that down. I think part of it in the, in the reading talked about, you know, we inherited this from the Egyptians and, you know, who, so they're kind of creating a separation as well. So, hey, let's focus on kind of what we're trying to teach here instead of grabbing everything from everywhere. So I think all of that was just a little bit of the chaos and needed to kind of put a handle on it. <clears throat> Do you think Which is necessary today? even today. So even necessary it's necessary today, and I like your analogy as a okay. child. You don't need to know what it is. Just shut them down. But do you think it's different today, so, the abuse of the communication with the spirits? Do you think it's different? Well, we, see, we see that today. I don't know the, the, the realm of how bad that is, but it exists, right? So it does exist, right? Um, know, there's extortion, you know, associated with Steve, this. Steve, every once in a while, he tells us the examples of that yeah. abuse. Yeah. I know a lot of people that still, like, try to communicate with spirits. Because they want to know, like, which job should I get? Should I date this guy? Should I not? You know, yeah. what should I have for dinner tonight? Yeah. Then they, they use like the pendulum, like to try to tell them like which way to go. And, yeah, evoking like, cats and like, oh yeah, yeah, and, and rocks and you know, 
all okay, kinds so of it, stuff. So yeah. it becomes difficult. Okay, so now in a, <laughs> in a non-structured environment with, with experienced people to help guide you, which is how we're, what we're doing through spiritism, right? Mm -hmm. And some of our teachers here at the center, for example. In fact, I spoke on this recently. You know, that it's important to, to learn and understand and be educated. Uh, it's also so to understand yourself. And those, and that pendulum, depending on where it goes, you're getting help. And you're being guided by disincarnate spirits. And, you know, depending on where you are and your evolution and how you think good versus not so good, imagine the help you're getting, right? So, again, you need to qualify your help by helping qualify yourself and having higher quality in how you act and think and do. So all these things are relevant. So, But I like the fact that, that Kardec, back to you know the, the story, is it was, you know, what he was saying is, look, you're taking that out of context. Right? That was when then, and it was appropriate because, and this is why they said it. So if you bring back the context of what the priest was asking when it took it out of context, it was easy to understand, you know, that was then, those things were but here's the reasons why. This is now, we're educating you in, in a light that says it's still here. Uh, and now it's appropriate to go forward with learning these things, right? So I think this is part of the message we're learning is, like Jesus, for example, he didn't speak in parables. But of these things, we're still learning what he's saying. Now, 2,000 years later, we're reading between the lines, we're finding all these other things of what he's saying. Couldn't talk directly at the time, right? It's just not how he was doing or could do it, right? So even even some of those that were appropriate to that time, we have to now reinterpret them for our own time to get the real message. And all this is the dynamics of that. So I like the way this kind of unfolds, and sometimes it's not literal. We need to, we're learning this through spiritism and through the Jesus teachings. It's not the literal part. We have to dig a little deeper, and this is another you know, indication they put it well, you know, when I was younger, you know, I needed to be governed, you know, capped, I didn't have to know, it wasn't helping me in any way, um, but now, you have another one, now it's more appropriate for the dynamics of, so they, they have a, a, a B, Steve, you got one on your book, you, you uh, maybe think of something too, with, with someone asking, you know, what should I do, should I date, blah, 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 uh, we also fundamentally yes, have to sir, realize you're that you're we have the answers and we have the responsibility for our lives. So if we are looking to a teacher or a guru or someone to not, you know, I think we should be learning from them, but as Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. So the answers are ultimately inside of us. So we have to take responsibility and not look for, you know, not look to be a puppet. And I think you see that all the time now. People want to blame the devil for things and, and they want to do you know point fingers and and not really assume responsibility so I think again and intention I think is very very important what are we you know what are we trying to learn and why and are we realizing ourselves like I said knowing mm -hmm. ourselves you know and when mm -hmm. we're talking spirit is about free, free will too that kind of like when I start reading about that and start going like you know and, and a good spirit will never interfere with our free will <laughs> you know so that idea alone maybe like starts to because when I first started reading about spiritism, I was reading it in the context of, like, in my experience was with all these other people doing all these other things, like, outside of spiritism, the spiritualists and, and different practices and metaphysical stuff. And, and when I, so when I started reading it, I started questioning a lot about, like, the things that I was doing and what I was reading and, you know, and, and what, um, you know, I said, like, if I, if I actually go, like, like, with what I'm reading now, that means I'm going to have to, like, give up lot of the things that I was doing before, you know, like just logically, that's, that's like where it was going to go, um, uh, but, but it's good, I mean, it's, it's interesting because now it's like, like, even if I had somebody that would offer me these things, because I always wanted somebody, like, of course, I want somebody to tell me what to do and make my life easy and tell me, like, how to, how to live abundantly and, and all these things that, that they preach and, you know, but, um, like, when it takes the responsibility away from me. But um, it's it's interesting too that like Alan Kardec brings up um, the idea. I don't know, maybe the priest or Alan Kardec brings up the idea that um, um, in Moses' time um, they actually uh, gave the death penalty 
to people that would mm -hmm. conjure spirits. <laughs> so, so, I mean, this is a whole other thing. We could really talk about that. And, and as you were just asking, um, have we changed? You know, and, and as a society, like, we don't give the death penalty as much, but we're still using it today, you know. And, and I mean, I, mean, I could, we could probably spend a whole, like, month talking about just that. <laughs> no. But he, he made it, he made it um, clear that it wasn't for just conjuring spirits. Like it, it, it was it was when they started to abuse that power and use it to you know to like start you know trying to tell the future and probably probably using it for profit, trying to you know hmm. use spirits. But it never says anything about you know it never denies the fact that people were communicating with, communicating with spirits. It was probably more accepted back then. And then you get these you know these writings and and, and you know in the Bible saying oh. Well, now you know. Now they have their proof of why, of how they can condemn all these other religious practices that deal with spirits and experiences. Because now you have an actual quote, but really it's just dealing with one, you know, one small aspect of it. It never denies the fact that spirits exist, or like you even said it too. Like you know, you're, you're able to communicate with them. People are born naturally with, with these gifts, and it wasn't until you know the one specific rule came about, and now it's now they have their, you know, they have their. They're black and white, you know, writing saying that, you know, you can't contra a, a spirit. And like you said about the death penalty, too, it's, you know, it's, it mentions in the book also that it was a very common punishment for a lot of crimes back then. Mm -hmm. even, even, even collecting firewood for personal use on a Sabbath, you would get condemned to death for doing that. You know, like the most ridiculous thing you could ever think of. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, it's, yeah. you know, kind of points out in this that they're the mosaic. Well, there's like two sets of laws. One is encoded, of course, on the tablets of the Ten Commandments, and that was carried out by Jesus. And it, uh, but then the laws that were applied to, to the customs of the time, you know, that changed. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, the laws that uh, uh, Christianity has, that changed too. Mm. I mean, when we think about the Catholic Church and uh, the Pope now, uh, uh, Talking about um, a good priest being able to marry, and the, the view of uh, uh, when he was asked, uh, "What about LGBT?" And he says, "Who am I to judge?" You know, this is—it's uh, like the ch times today are changing, and so the laws change with them. But the, but the the commandments. This is different. This is different, and this will be forever. Yeah, I mean, the church has to do a lot to market themselves to people, you know, so they can't, they, they can't, like, uh, continue to, like, being, like, the way they've been for the last, two, you know, two millennium and, and, and still, like, you know, appeal to because as people change, you know, the, the church has to change along with them, you know, that's been, like, a recurring theme in this chapter is that, um, is that, like, you know, when Galileo, you know, discovered that the, the earth was orbiting the sun, the church Church has communicated him, but eventually, the, the, like when science like says, no, no, this is how it is. The church has to like <laughs> has, to, has to agree with it. So it really makes more sense for the church to just kind of like stay with the time instead of like you know trying to trying to fight change so much. Um, they lost a lot of people. Mm -hmm. A lot of you know a lot of potential spiritists. <laughs> But, you know, and Alan Kardec starts to talk about uh, how communication with spirits, um, it doesn't really matter if you agree with it or disagree with it. It's a, it, he says it either exists or it doesn't exist. And if it exists, it's because it's a law of nature. Um, so no matter what the church um, believes about it or says about it, if it's a law of nature, then, you know, then God created it. And um, there's no way, you know, it, there's no way that the, the church could deny it. You know, eventually it'll have to, you know, it'll come to pass that, you know, it'll be accepted and, you know, by everyone. Um, so where are we going with this? So we're stepping into 17 now. The church yeah. does not deny it. We don't understand we're, we're part of it. Right. So there's a, one with it, yeah. yeah. That's a good point. I remember I heard something, I think last month, it was somewhere, it talked about, you know, 
you look at something that objectively you don't, you know, and you stay in positive orientation. You see that everything is regenerating itself. You don't see a dying, you see it regenerating. Mm -hmm. Planets, mm -hmm. plants, whatever this is, solar systems, you know, so you, know, you don't have to look at it as if it's going away. It's rebuilding itself. It's regenerating itself because that's what it does. That's what nature does. It, it progresses incessantly, forever. So it was an interesting thought. I said, wow, you know, so if you could just grasp that and apply it to everything you know, everything, Imagine, you know, so it's, it's one of those concepts where, wow, is that simple? Yes. It of, is. It really is. Isn't it? It's like, wow, that's freedom to know. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're really in there, right, it's freedom to know that that's what it is. This is exactly what we're talking about. And so through spiritism, we're learning this in, in ways that us as humans need to step through it, right? But effectively, that's a pretty profound statement. Yeah. For so some people, for others, they will understand. say, Ooh, I gotta be responsible then. I cannot just abuse <coughs> everything around me because I've, I've been uh, believing that there is only one life. So for some people, it's a relief. For others, it's like... It's an extremely popular idea. saying, and I like yeah. to test people here at the center with it too because it's so prevalent in culture. I say, well, you only live once. You know, and, and I like to throw that out there just to see if people are listening. You know, oh, yeah, you know, you might have people. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta yeah. ride it till the wheels fall off. You know, you know just once. Every time someone says YOLO, work, I'm like, no, it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> My condition. Or life's too short. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna come back. <laughs> lifetime. This lifetime. It's very, very. Short. Not staling. He's not coming back. This, he said yeah. not to this planet. Oh no, we had a recent debate. He's going to Jupiter. He's on defense at this point. Oh. The verdict is still out. That's, that's just an hour. I had the other We had, we had I a know. conversation I, recently. <laughs> <laughs> the jury's out. Um, but to really be continued. Back. And I, I mean, I can talk too about like questions that spiritism answers. You know, like when it came to me, like wondering like how I got this dealt this hand in life. You know, where it, no other like dogma could really make sense to me. Like. Um, some of the spiritual people I know have this actual belief in like fatalism where they say like before I came to the planet I made an agreement that I was going to go through like everything that I went through and that this was like part of my learning process and like but what they were kind of saying was that like I have no free will and I'm just like as if I'm on an autopilot like a robot or something and like I'm just going through life because I planned all this out before I, I came down and I'm like I would if I had like you know known ahead of time like, I think I might have made some better choices. <laughs> I don't know, you know, but it, it never really made sense to me, and, and, and that that whole thing. Um, but usually, the spirits they say in the the books through the mediums, they say that we are always asking. Actually, in the spirits book, we're gonna read about this. We are always asking more than we can handle. We say, I can handle this. No, give it to me. I can handle this cancer. I can handle this horrible spouse. I can handle this boss. Ah, I can't handle. Give it to me, so I will. I will be feeling. I will. I will feel much better when I leave that body. But and then when we get here, then we. I just give want up. to leave. <laughs> I just want to leave. You. I don't want to go back. I want to go back to. No but school. usually, we usually we ask more than we can handle, and sometimes and and the mentors they say the spirits uh, the spiritual mentors they say. Are you sure you can handle this? You go like, ah, I'm sure I can handle this. Don't you think it's a little bit too much? And they try, but some of us, they say that we, we say, no, we are determined. We, we want this, and they know we cannot handle. But they allow it so we can, you know, you, we will see that it's not that easy, that we will need to break it down. It's funny because in a coaching, because I'm a coach, in coaching, uh, that's the system we use for the client to reach the, their goal. We break down because if we think in a project it, as a whole, it is too much, so we break it down. It's it's a funny thing. It's the same thing in spirit. In kind yeah, of I can't I can't run a, a marathon, but I can like think about doing a 5K or and then maybe doing a 10k and then yeah. maybe doing you know a half marathon one day. That's a good and, you know, yeah. well, it comes to what you open this with like staying present. 
you know, we stay in the yeah. present moment. We're we're dealing with what's in front of our face instead of projecting something that hasn't even happened yet or exactly. something back there. This so is where we are. This is the only reality that's real right now. You know? yeah. It's, so right it's good to have goals, though. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. of course. Yeah. But, but, but not, to be, not to be yeah. so obsessed with them that, yeah. that they take away from what you're, you know. Overwhelming. But, and I mean, the other things, too, with spiritism, like the knowledge of the future life, makes me, like, question things that I'm doing right now. Like, for example, like, the guy at work that I can't stand, I started going in my head, and, and whenever, whenever I see him, um, I don't want to say his name, but I just think, I just, I think of the word brother, like instead of, instead of calling him like you, whatever, or this or that, like, and I don't say it out loud because he'd probably think it was weird, but I think like, he's your brother, he's your brother, you know, like, this is like going in my head all the time. True. So, it, and it's changing it's the way I'm like interacting with him. You yeah, know, even though he's yeah. like a yeah, detestable yeah. human yeah. being, you know, it's, yeah. it's still like, yeah. he's my brother, you know. Yeah. He ain't heavy, baby, he's my brother. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Uh, it's being grateful, being grateful for his uh, experience, good and bad. Yeah. And, and the knowledge that he's on the planet too, yeah. for his evolution, and I mean, it's for, I would be very judgmental if I said he's behind me, because who knows, like, there's, you know, there's different levels to everything, and I might be right, ahead of right, him exactly. as a spiritist, and he might be ahead of me, yeah. like, morally in ways that I don't know about, you Exactly. Know? <laughs> like, he, yeah. like, you know, it's, you just never really know. So, True. I mean, everybody's got, like, something to offer, I think, you know. Yeah. But, um, Definitely. But it, it changes the way I interact with, with people, like the people that like normally, you know, I don't like or I, I would run from, <laughs> you know, like I, I, it, it, it changes the way, you know, it changes that. Yeah. Like knowing that I'm, I'm going, going to come back, <laughs> you know, they're coming back, you can't get away from them, you know. <laughs> In the beginning, uh, when I got these ideas of uh, this uh, Spirit's teachings, I was like, I don't want to come back and be like his uh, sister or brother or wife, whatever. I want to deal with this right now. I have a different view today, but in the beginning, when I first learned that, I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to come with that in the same family of that person. So, no, I'm not. No, of course, I have a different approach. I wonder if we can choose our next reincarnation, our next experience, our next manifestation, our next... Well, we do. We, we, we do. do. We're yeah. part of it. It's it's a, we have good to ponder those. We do, and yeah. we can change this one. For example, oh, sure. if we Personal, want, yeah. we of course we don't. As as Steve said, we don't plan every detail. We plan the, the you know the for example, oh you, you have a person that always kills themselves. and said you you got to stay stay in one incarnation without killing yourself. So just to being alive here in this body, and they. They can change this, right? They can change this. Even if you ch we chose a few things to live, we can change. We can do so much better. We can actually the spirits they say that some of us we actually we uh, fix things that we're supposed to fix in two or three lives. We fix in one life. It's all, it, it's in our hands. We we are free to to do and to be. Uh, uh, happy in this life and uh, this idea that we have to suffer that we have to pay no 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 no, no it doesn't work this way we have to forget the past whatever we each one of us here we are being as uh, uh, killers rapers <laughs> you name it each one of us each one of us this is the best so far that we are, you know, learning to be ourselves. We have to forget. Uh, I remember this spiritist, this guy, he is a psychologist and a spiritist. And he has, uh, he was talking about this man that he was supposed to be crazy, was in a um, hospital, and he was treating. this guy and the guy was saying the guy was not the sick guy was not a spiritist and he said I hear voices what does the voice say in your head the psychologist spiritist said it say he says that I killed my mom and then the psychologist said tell them that yes you killed your mom tell them tell them yes you killed your mom but you don't want to do this anymore and it, it made me think you know we've been like cavemen and we had to defend our lives we have Killed people to defend our lives, to defend our community, our tribe, or whatever. But we did this to survive. We're not doing 
He does anymore. So why think about all this? It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is how happy we are today. The good things we do today. And how we love each other today. That's the only thing that matters. Nothing matters. The past, the past doesn't exist. The, the future doesn't exist. Yeah. It's present moment. When we fix something here today, we fix the past, we fix the future, we change our, our route. Because yeah, the thing of it, you know, so you have, you have, you know there's some trials you want to go through because you want to master that next virtue, right? And that core value. Oh, we think so say you want to be more patient. It's just this patience thing, man. It's like ten times in a row, I'm going to get it this time, right? You are like that, right? It's I add do it. It's to your list. Okay, you don't have to suffer, and, you know, you did whatever, it's right, you just, you need, you're just trying to master this. That's all. You master, you don't want to hurt someone, you don't want to kill someone, right, you master that. Whatever, the, all the other things you've done, you mastered it. Once and you how do you master it, you, master it. It. you take it with you forever, you don't have to do that again. But the ones you haven't mastered, they're going to keep showing up in contracts. Yeah. Your people, your friends, your wife, your dog, how all do the master? things. How do we master teach something? you to master that thing? Doing over and over how again, and it becomes natural. How do you, how do you endure that? That contrast is up to you. Yeah. Just Why? Your happiness. So that's all it is. If you think about it, so just deal with the contrast like, whoa, right? Whatever emotion you have, and then you go, okay, what's in there for me? What am I supposed to learn today? Yeah. And that's really, if we can you know, stay in there, we, we get through. We might even pick off a, a couple of new, that weren't even listed this in card. You know, I, I, I have to give, you know? stay on Cynthia's side on this one, though, because I, I was yeah. dealing with something maybe about a year ago that I was like having trouble with and uh, so I started looking up like uh, some <coughs> I don't know, like, Buddhist meditations or whatever mm. and, and I was like okay I need to learn to let go of some things so I said how do you let go and so I start going on YouTube and I look up like letting go and I found a lot of videos by a lot of people with like robes on and, and dots on their head and things like that and they were saying you must let go <laughs> <laughs> your attachments your attachments for suffering. Oh but, my gosh. But they, There's a for but they don't tell you how. <laughs> they don't say how. They don't, I'm like, and I'm watching like every video. Experience. Right. Kind of like experience. Yeah. <laughs> how do you let go? How do you let go? It's like a V8. You know, like, like, oh, I can sit there and meditate and I can. I There's an app for that. You can't push <laughs> <laughs> Let it go, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Can I go? If, if only I can let go of my, my character defects the way I can let go of furniture. Yeah. It's funny you said it Master, <laughs> master the virtues and everything. We're, we're trying Once to you master it within yourself, master, be kind to yourself, be happy, be uh, caring, be generous with yourself. Once you do that, it overflows. Once it overflows, I believe then, in that. And then you can. I do. Then that's the time you can then give it to I others. Do. I when do. you reach out with others, looking for happiness out there, that's when you're going to suffer. I have clients that they are good to everybody, but they hate themselves. Yeah. And I, I ask them. How can you like someone if you hate yourself? And they cannot answer this question. It is a simple question. How can you be kind to somebody else, but you cannot be kind to yourself? How is it possible? It's not possible. It's, it's a martyrdom uh, type syndrome yeah. where you try to do yeah, everything. Yeah, there, there are so many projections. So there are so many things, but it, it, is, it is not possible. So, but you go, you, you find yourself in that trap. We yeah. all do. And the let go is the same thing. And the forgiveness is the same thing. If people say, oh, I forgive everyone, but I don't forgive myself. Then you do not forgive. There is no such a thing. If you can't forgive yourself, be kind to yourself, you can't forgive others. That's what you said. It's easier to start with in here. Because I, I heard a guy one time talking about how, like, how spiritual he was. <laughs> you know, and, and he was saying like how he they learn to forgive and everything, and then he goes, except for my wife, my ex-wife, she's such a... <laughs> right? <laughs> he said it, like, right in the, and, and we're like, like, what are you talking about? Like, same like, sentence. Basically, like, I'm going to stop listening to you right now. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> we hear that. We contradict ourselves all the time. It's, yeah, back I do that.
but uh, uh, mastering whatever virtues are working on it. Uh, same thing with judgment, like being judgmental. Mm. We're the most harsh on ourselves. So as we, I think if we can learn to not be so judgmental, we can see it more objectively um, and see what we're doing, see that we're working, step back and see that we're working and it's progress and we don't have to be so fixated on what we're not doing as opposed to what we are doing. Um, and I'm, I'm starting to view people, like you said, the guy at work, when I can be empathic, truly, and I can see people instead of terms of like evil or bad, because that's a comparison, it's a label. It puts them over there and it puts me over here. We're, we're the same, we're all connected. And I've, I've been there, I've done that. And what if, what I've if seen he had this. a mullet? Uh, yeah, maybe, uh, you don't know. He's, he's bald in the front with a mullet in the back. <laughs> then imagine what he goes through. Imagine what he goes through by you know. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> exactly. he, has he probably power suffers to, in his own yeah. He has the power to cut that mullet off. You know, he could if he wanted to. <laughs> so do you. Yeah, he could maybe his girlfriend's had it sexy. Scissors. He doesn't, doesn't let finish, but he hasn't had a girlfriend in a long when time. I, when I see people as sick, uh, I, don't, I don't see them as separate from me. And I see that maybe it's a hard thing because when you get emotional, you know, you get angry. It's hard to get through that. And I think that's part of the goal here. Uh, what can I do to help this person? Because honestly, when, when, when I am able to do that, the feeling is amazing because it's kind of a paradox. When you help somebody, you're helping yourself. It's a, you, you know, you're transferring definitely, this energy. Definitely. And you're this mastering person is my that, brother. That, when we do that, what you're saying, we are mastering that feeling. So, he, so he first you have compassion. Then there was an act of charity, which created a, a stance of humility. Imagine all these things you can get all at one time for actually caring. The more Imagine we do it, but we can only do it. You it's not hard. Once you're like, wow, okay. Once I got through the emotional piece, well, man, that guy. And then you and kind then of it, went yeah. through and you saw a situation that you can help improve something for you that may affect others or something yeah. for them. They say it turned into a few things for yourself, which is what you needed, not just what they were witnessing. Absolutely. Maybe the person will be able to love themselves more the more they help others. Just that just way you don't know what they what seeds you plant in people, what you, what you do, you don't know necessarily how that's going to affect that person. That might have affected a, a smile that you normally wouldn't smile at because you you know you're angry, so you, you turn. But you know you, you really don't know how that's going to affect them, and that could you know help them out. There's an old saying: uh, uh, move a muscle, change a thought. Because some, sometimes people try to like think their way into acting better. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's better just to act better, and then hopefully you'll start thinking better. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, they say resentment's like poison. You drink it and you try to, you hope the other person dies. So if I'm resentful, I'm angry at this guy, and I hang on to it, I'm just tearing myself up inside. Yeah, he doesn't feel it. I usually get a rash or something. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, aware. Clean, I usually, I usually, I usually that's, yeah, absolutely. that's just so narrow-minded. The, the awareness is just so focused on, mm -hmm. centered. When you open your mind, open up your awareness. You, you see your more, uh, you see empathy. You can actually see, from that, from everyone's point of view, is valid. Regardless of how bad you think of them, it's that they, they, they did something to anger you for a reason. And if you can understand that, you, then you can understand and then forgive. Understand why they did what they did. And then create this harmony instead of fighting and being angry and creating more disharmony. It's, it's, it's interesting what you said about your colleague that he can take his thing off. Uh, no, because he, he can, and it may not even be complicated, but he's not doing it. But the, the truth is that we can all do mm. that with our own uh, imperfections. Yeah. It's probably very easy, uh, but uh, we're not doing it. And what may not even be an issue for us, uh, you know, may be very clear for somebody else. Um, but that's the paradox. Uh, we can all do that, and you know, I'm with many things that I'm, I'm, I'm aware of. I'm not doing it. The word that came to mind while we were talking about this and jumped out at me was the word objective versus the word sub subjective. Objective, and I just pulled it up from the dictionary. We all know what it means. I just want to read it really quick, and I'm going to summarize. So, objective, right, is is this measurable, this observable. Right? Versus the subjective, which is opinionated, my interpretation, right? Completely different things. So when you look at it, you know, objectively, right? Then you're going to see clearer or clearly. And I think this is also part of what we're talking about. This is part of what Spiritism offers. So you to open up. Um, it's about you, right? And helping you in order to do that. There's things you need to learn, tools you need to bring with you, like objectivity. So I just wanted to throw that out.
a long time ago, like when I was not spiritual and I was trying to become spiritual, I looked up the word spiritual in the dictionary and because I was like, what? I don't even know what it means. So, and, and one of the definitions I really liked was, was that it allows you to see the big picture, you know? Well, like Hopefully that's what we're doing here. Is like you know, because yeah. we all have, we all, we've all been, you know, I want to say, <laughs> like every one of us has, gets conditioned in our lives. You know, we we get you know used to things. We filter a lot of things out. But when we look at everything as a beginner and try to see it with fresh eyes and see what's really going on, like you know what we can't see and read between the lines, and we get a better idea of what's going on here and now. Object, objective uh, awareness. Mm. Objective observation. Observation. Just, yeah. you know, True. Always in the present moment. So what is, what are you, who's the one that's looking that's being objective? Right. Find that one that's looking. And the observer, so if, you, if, you, if you lose on who you are, your thoughts right. are projecting and, and, and what you're seeing. True. You're not seeing it. But when you really get back to your spirit, mm. to that thing that you are, that I am, you know, mm. that, that we can't describe it. We and when you can be there without the uh, without the who you think you are mm. Mm. you get back to that I am mm. then you can be objective but you're not really being objective as I said before if you are who you think you are yeah that's so, so true because your thoughts are, are interfering with being objective mm. just strive for objectivity we can't yeah. Yeah. be objective yep. just strive toward it right. that's all I think yeah well we can be objective if we we find that spirit that's inside of us, and this is what our goal is, to find that spirit that's inside here. That's and we're talking to spirits outside. Mm -hmm. that, still, if, if, does that help you find the spirit inside yourself? Maybe it does. I mean, I, I, I think it, you know, right. it, it helps. It's not something easy to, to feel, though. That's a good measuring stick, though. So you find yourself being more objective, keep doing whatever you're doing, right? So you're getting closer to the purity of a non-judgmental, I'm just observing what I am walking around, I'm learning from everything that I see, I'm finding the good and the bad, I'm choosing to appreciate the positive things that are happening, I'm learning from the negative things that I don't want to deal with anymore, they keep coming up because I haven't mastered whatever's creating that. So I think it could be a tool, this is interesting, we see ourselves being more and more objective I think that's an indication that we're, we're progressing in a manner which we When we want. see God outside of that ourselves, sense, so we're not being objective. All right, so that's back inside. But let's just... You go back inside. But bring it up with my work. And then, go to your room. And, and, go to your room. And you get in touch with that. my room. It's a comfort zone. And you get in touch with that Holy Spirit that's sitting inside of you and you're looking at God. You know, it's thrown by the true man. Master, or then you are truly objective. I was thinking about a, a, one of my favorite lines in the Tao Te Ching, the ancient Chinese mm. text. Mm. This might make me sound smart, it might not. But <laughs> it says, <laughs> in, pursuit, <laughs> in pursuit of knowledge, every day something is added. But in pursuit of the Tao, which means the way, every day something is let go. Oh my gosh, I so agree with this. So if, if we're... That's amazing. That's a good goal we can that's strive amazing. for every day. Every day we try to let go yeah. of one, yeah. one new yeah. thing.